Um, it, you want to start out like I've got I've sunshine, sunshine on a cloudy day. I think you may have stayed or started a little low for me, but it's okay. When it's cold outside, I've, I've got, got the, the month of May. Come on, let's kind of speed up. Uh. Well, I, I guess you could say what can make me feel this way. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Talking about hip hop. I don't hear your hip-hop. harmonies. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know why your your harmonies were different than that. What I was thinking. I just kept going up. Yeah, I know. Because you went somewhere that. Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Hip hop, talking about hip hop. Hip hop. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, y'all? This is Tressie. Uh, and this is Cedric. And we're through the crate, digging through cultural and current events through the hip hop lens. Let's get to do it. Hey, guys, welcome back. <laughs> we're here again. We are here again. Um, Episode seven, 18. 18 oh, oh we are legal man you can we legally legal. fuck the podcast now <laughs> you can fuck the shit out of this podcast and not go to jail ah <laughs> uh, feels great doesn't it our red shirts are off <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> okay Woo! all right Any hoot. uh yeah so uh pretty much graduating uh, high school with this episode yeah uh, uh, moving basically. moving to college looking for a, a four year or or maybe a uh, community college save some money first i don't know how about we just just start talking about some hip-hop <laughs> man i think that that'll work <laughs> okay all right great uh, so what you been listening to oh what have i been listening to i've been listening to a new album that dropped and it was by the name of big baby drum by the artist drum oh that is the one that i've actually listened to the most recent um and let's see want to know what i feel about it i'd I'd love to oh really that's that's crazy because like if you do i can tell you right now yeah please do like it'd be crazy if i told you so yeah like the album was not bad um overall i'm just gonna give a quick like little one-two punch with this one overall the music was great i just think that i wish that someone else was singing some of the songs other than him because they're good songs mm. and but the, but also um mm. i don't know i don't i don't want people to think that it's a bad album because i don't think it's a bad album i don't also don't think it's a like a great album mm-hmm. i think it's one of those albums that like are is fun it's like a super fun album and you can it's like something i can hear like myself making or something but when i guess mm. if you're listening to something that somebody else that that uh, um put that much work into i don't know so I mean, I guess to put that in perspective, uh, would you watch ten of you on a basketball court playing basketball? Hell yeah, I would. No, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> I had to big myself up for a little bit right there, but no, like I just think that. Um, I mean, I don't want to knock him because he's super fun and he's super lovable, and but like when it comes to the music, I guess I have to just be objective. And he's a really talented dude, but I just I don't know if some of the things that he sings is something that I want to hear from him. But I also listened to a playlist that was curated by him, and I definitely hear his influences in all of his music, and I understand the way, okay. why he is the way he is. All right. So, like, he, he listens to stuff, like, um, from Funkadelic to Outkast to, um, like, Chris Brown's, like, Excuse Me, Miss. Like, there was a ton of stuff on that Spotify playlist that was curated by him, I'm assuming, and because it had his name on it Got it. <laughs> but um and like listening to those i was like you know what i totally get like where he's f- coming from but um but yeah um overall i thought it was not bad i love the music from it like but i just kind of wish that somebody else was singing it at, so- at some points in the album i guess that's my only criticism okay ah uh, but the only thing i can think of off the top of my head all right i mean Fair enough. I I got like 
two and a half songs in and just had to put it down. Oh no. Uh dude sounds terrible. Oh. Like you're right. Like the the two and a half songs that I heard, I'm like, oh man, the music is great. Like I hear the melodies he's trying to like put through. But it, Yeah. He can't sing. No. It's I mean like, like he can. He cannot sing. <laughs> I think he can. I think he has Oh my god. And he does these little runs and then he like he puts a little umph on it, but then he's like he doesn't hit the notes he needs to hit in the and it's like no that sounds bad it sounds yeah. bad and it's and i you've always liked this dude like you've always been I oh have. yeah he's so lovable oh yeah i love his energy and you know the whole uh what was the one single he put out that drake took for the hotline bling thing cha-cha the cha-cha it's a cool song you know it used the sample for the like the like mario sample or whatever was in there it was like the uh like the 16 bit feel in there, you know, yeah. it was, and it, 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 it was a cool, fun song. And it, I guess what made that song good and fun was that he, it was as if he knew he couldn't sing, but he was like, fuck it. I'm going to do this anyway. Yeah. And it, and it worked on that song. Cause it wasn't like a huge, like crazy vocal. Like he wasn't asked to do this great vocal performance on the cha cha song. Right. But I think that's also, but okay. So I don't want to say I don't think I sh- I want to roll him out as a singer. Then what? Then what is he doing? I know. I know. He's not rapping. He does rap on some of the tracks. If you were to made it through all the I, way, I mean, like you you made it through the misunderstood song with the Young Thug when Young Thug kind of showed him. Young Thug was like amazing on that song. The melodies yeah, he came up with. Yeah, but Young Thug is 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 definitely growing on me. He's, he's I've always wanted Young Thug to be. Kind of like that, but mm-hmm. whatever. This is not a Young Thug tape. This is uh, this is drum and. But I don't think that he can't sing. Like if you listen to Caretaker, like he sings on that Caretaker. Okay, I mean, and Care to Caretaker sounds great. So so part of being a good singer is also knowing like your lane and. and but I think he does know good. his lane, and I think that's where where he stands. And I think it's. <laughs> but How I many think, times does he do? But I think the, the, this is the thing is that I think that one I'm going to bat for this guy because I really like him. Two, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. Um, but like I think another thing is is that like he's found his lane because he's kind of that like happy trappy hip hop type of dude. If you listen to Cash Machine and Broccoli, like his two biggest hits after Cha Cha. Those two songs are super like happy go lucky, yes, trappy. Yes. My cash machine, my cash machine. You know, um, and broccoli too is just like all of it's. I don't know. It's just like really happy. Like that's his personality, and he does that. And I think he also has like like some good songs like Caretaker, and he has some good songs like um. I'm like I'm trying to think of the ones from his album. Yeah, dude, but, it's it, great. You know, I mean playlist curated by him awesome uh maybe a song in a playlist by him awesome a whole fucking record dude Mm -hmm. a whole record of that i get it i get it i understand (laughs) i understand i get it i understand where you're coming from but i will say that um i guess to add on to our criticism of this album i was expecting so much more from that erica badu uh feature oh erica badu's on it yeah, if you got if you would have gotten back past Didn't even two and get a half, to it. <laughs> two and a half songs. I, I, I seriously tried. I, I was like, Oh, drum, cool. I put it on the first song I'm just like Alright. Mm-hmm. The second song I'm like, Oh, this beat is dope. I don't know what the second song is. The beat is fucking sick. And the, That's like, misunderstood. Yeah. With young yeah, Thug. Yeah, and then it I yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing, is that like I thought that Erica Badu would come with they would come with a better song. And that song wasn't that good to me. But I still like his overall vibe. And I think that's probably why I'll continue to listen to it. And probably why I gave it a second uh, a second try. All right, cool. I'm right. still going to advocate for him because he's cool and I would like to be his friend. Boom. Okay, so I guess 
in that same lane, I, I know you probably didn't listen to this record, but it's someone who I think is in a similar lane as him when it comes to um, them not being rappers, but them still being kind of hip hop. Hmm. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign campaign. Oh, that whole album. So that listen, was a while ago, no? It did. It did come out a little while ago, but I've I kind of went back to it. Like I, I had listened to it when it first came out, and then I stopped, and then I went back to it. And um, I think Ty definitely. Uh, I don't think he took any steps backwards, um, but I didn't see like a huge dramatic step forward in his overall um, from his last album. Like it wasn't. Like, oh my God, this is so much better. Uh, but I, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I liked it too. I liked the campaign. I uh, liked it. Did I really just say that? Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess the my one criticism of it, um, just because I, I do like Ty so much and I could seriously sit here and just like give you 20 minutes of just how much I enjoy listening to his music right. and how well I think he can sing. Mm-hmm. Um, and how I love his kind of aggressive delivery um, where it's almost like he's rapping, but he's singing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, he, he hits the pocket really well when he's, when he's uh, singing and his little runs and harmonies are just like, they're like freaking so hip hop, but still so soulful. I have a question for you. Yeah. The pockets that he hits, are those um, complex pockets? Or are they just like kind of simple, like you know, like when he's like kind of rapid singing? Are those? Oh like no, no, it's 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 simple. definitely pretty simple. Okay. Um, but it's he's doing it better than a lot of other people who are doing it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like those dudes who are doing it with the auto tune on, he can actually sing and hit those gotcha. hit those kind of sounds uh, and harmonies. Yeah. Uh, and rhythms. I mean, because it's it's definitely not like he's He's bringing this brand new thing, mm-hmm. um, but I think he's taking what is hot now, the kind of, and like, I, I don't even want to say it's mumble rap, but it's like he's taking that like trap inspired sound um, and he's put a little soul behind it. Ty Dolla Sign, there's no question about his musicality. Like he is a musician at heart. I also think that... Um, He's a very, very good singer. However, his subject matter leaves a lot to be desired. Oh yeah, that so so that's actually the the one thing I want to criticize about the album. Mm-hmm. It is called Campaign, and there's these sketches in Random. the middle of them that are just like Random. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, and you're like, okay, cool. And then the next song is about like. Some fucking bitch. bitches, right? Yeah. It's just like, like what the fuck I, are you doing? I don't fully really understand what's going on. Like, are you trying to make a political point? It makes no sense. Like, I understand. Like, you like first one was free TC, and then the next one's campaign, and that kind of like ties in like concept wise, just you know, with your brother and what's going on. And now that was a dope song. Oh, the no, one yeah. with his brother, no justice, uh, no justice, dope song. You know what? Free TC because I want to hear what the fuck that nigga has to say. Yes, please. <laughs> Every I want song to he's hear on. exactly speaking that truth exactly, and they're they're always so good. Like so, like that's the one thing I love about Ty is that he he's bringing like the production that he chooses to put on his projects brings such a soulful but modern vibe yeah. to it. You know, and it's just so good. Like I find myself rocking out to No Justice Justice, and then going straight to Zaddy. <laughs> And like just going back and forth between those two songs because those two like yeah I understand those like Zaddy's the single and Justice is like just because I'm a big fan of TC now but yeah like they have the like such different subject matter but the music moves and translates to me like just so well like ah those two songs so for me I think it's like it it's literally that grown and sexy yes like it's literally you're grown enough. To wear two faces. Right. You're grown enough to be like, you know what? No, tonight I'm getting ratchet. You know <laughs> right, what I'm saying? Tonight right, I'm finna right. turn up. I'm finna wear my sexiest outfit. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the damn thing. I'm but a you know, sexy what? man. That's but what then, he says. <laughs> I'm sexy when I get out here. Oh, look at me do my two steps. I'm sexy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Buff up my alligators. <laughs> Look at me. Let me go. Let me go in this corner. Do like ten push ups. Let me get my biceps looking right. That's all it takes. You do like ten. Your shit. <laughs> Boom. Oh, only lasts like ten Ow. minutes. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, so so you can either like go out on your going to sexy, or you can the next day put on your Malcolm X, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and be militant against the system, and mm-hmm. you know he's he's able to do that. And I I guess maybe I'm beginning to understand artists that are honest about that. Yeah. Because you know a lot of times it's easy for us to be like, no man, you need to be on your Kendrick always. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. Or like you you know what I'm saying you. You need to be on your like conscious shit all the time. Right. Like, the second someone steps outside of that, it's just, you know, the whole Shea Butter, you know, <laughs> folks are like, what are you doing? No. And I well, say I Kendrick, guess, but I, I guess I guess Kendrick does go back and forth too. But yeah, you know, a little it's, bit, it's, but not as much. Not as much. But so it's, it's one of those things where like, it's okay because I go back and forth. Right. You know, I listen to both times. Don't nobody want to be talk all day all day every day you know so it's um so while i guess it is a critique it's more of a critique for me because you know when you see the name or the title campaign um i guess it can mean different things but i was i was just i don't know i guess i I was a little confused by the random ass skits yeah the skits were random and that was like that was one of the downfalls of the album and the subject matter was one of the downfalls but one thing that i will say is that yeah well i'm just saying like he he knows soul music he knows like ty dollar knows how to do this well Mm -hmm. and i think that's the same thing that drum knows how to do well he knows how to be that artist that everybody can be so i and everybody can't be a ty dollar sign you know what i'm saying everybody can relate to what drum's doing and he's actually doing it fairly well. Let me ask Better, you a question. You know, if it was Ty on the Drum album singing this song, oh. completely Salivate. different, completely different record, right? I know like, that. So, and, and this is not discrediting Drum as like a musician. Yes, you are. But it's Don't questioning him dare. as a fucking singer. He can't sing. I know. That's all I'm saying. And so, and so, I, you know what? At, this he, is so this is actually why I did sing time. makes me feel like I can't sing and I think I can sing. <laughs> you can sing. Ah, that you was can. funny. I can, I can you can sing. sing. You can sing. Sometimes. Yeah. Like if if you were in a choir with other people it <laughs> covering up my voice. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and and listeners, I don't mean to insult anyone, oh, but God. singing is completely different it's than relative. being a solo artist. It's completely different, and it's not relative. You can either, you can either hit a relative. note or you can't. Okay, I can hit notes now. Exactly, you can hit notes so you can sing. <laughs> as, as as black people say, you can sing, but you can't I sing. I okay? know I can't sing. So there's a difference. That's the only thing. Drum, but he Ty can't sing. sing. Oh, he can sing enough. Yeah, he can't sing enough. He can. He he. <gasps> yeah. So I'm imagine, trying. Drum. Imagine I, drum. I swear. Imagine drum. Drum. I'm Ty Dolla Sign. As the singer on the drum songs. I'm not going to comment. No, thank you. Uh, so, so what else you been listening to? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, what else have I been listening to? Um, what else have, has dropped? Like, I mean, recently, I mean, uh, did you give Dave East a listen? I gave him a small listen. I think I gave him one listen through. What'd I you gave think? Drum two listens. I think I actually I gave Drum three listens. I gave Dave one listen. He's a New York nigga. I love that shit. I love New York hip hop. Yeah, you were talking about that before. I love that shit. Um, I loved the features he had on his album. Or this isn't even an album. He's calling it in what is it, an LP or EP? Yeah. Before the actual the album's um, coming out soon. Yeah, I don't know. Um, let's be honest. I think he's bringing the New York sound back. Actually, I don't want to say that because the New York sound is evol- has evolved. It has. And I don't want to say like bringing it back because that means you're just bringing an old sound back. I think him and like Young M.A. and like uh, A Boogie with the hoodie and like all those dudes are like, bringing a, a, a newer, fresher sound 
of New York. And I think that he did that really well with this album. Um, I gave it one listen through. I liked the song uh, that he has with Seven Streeter. Seven Streeter. That song was great. Um, one critique, though, and I think this doesn't even have to do with his album. Um, or not, yeah, it's not even a critique for his album. He has a song on here with Beanie Siegel. Um, actually, let, let's reel that back. Let's let's try and get these thoughts in, in, in together. Um, so the first thing I'll say is that one, I I really um, enjoyed listening to the project. I need to give it another listen just to give it a actual like if if I like it or not. But I do know that the first time going around, I enjoyed listening to it. It was there were some bars there, of course, because he is a spitter. Um, one thing that I will say is that he does pay homage to to the people that he needs to pay homage to and i respect that a lot yeah like he's got two chains he's got uh seven excuse me seven well seven's been around for a while so i guess i can say paying homage to her but not really when it comes to um like rapper he's got fab he's got cameron i mean he's got beanie Siegel. like he's got the people that matter in in he he never has to yeah in hip-hop and in east coast hip-hop so he's got those stamps um the one thing i will say is that beanie Siegel sounds horrible and he i mean his bars are t- are tight uh, yeah. but his voice is Not very like good. it hurts my soul it's like dude you, you know i heard i heard uh dj envy say that uh all, when when they were interviewing ben, beanie and i was like nah man you know mac got it he got it and then i listened to the song yeah and i was like fuck he's gone I mean, he sounds like he's trying to do this all the time. He only got like one lung. I got one lung. <laughs> Sorry, that's fucked up. I can't breathe. I mean, Lance Armstrong did it with one ball. Hello. <laughs> hi yo. <laughs> Probably helped him on a bike seat. But, mm. you know what? It's, you know, so I'm having drinking. one lung doesn't help you rapping. Right, it doesn't. But I, I appreciate the effort. Yeah, there's definitely effort. And it's not like he doesn't have bars. So Yeah, you know, he should just keep, you know, uh, ghostwriting for uh, Dream Chasers. And moving on, how did you feel about the <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> the project? Oh, it it was cool. I mean, I I gave it a couple lessons. Um, I didn't, like, dig super deep in it. Um, mm-hmm. I felt like there wasn't a ton there to dig super deep. I felt like it was kind of just meant to give you an a general idea of of who he is because mm-hmm. i hadn't heard really any davies before this yeah uh, so this was really my first introduction so i didn't want to you know i i like album because i feel like that's the artist true you know okay this is me giving you a big piece of work that i put a lot of effort in um when he said this wasn't an album it kind of changed my expectations i guess um and with changing the expectations um I appreciated what what he had to offer, right? Because um, I hadn't heard him before, and um, it's 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 always refreshing to me because you know I grew up obviously with the ni- in the '90s era, um, so it's refreshing to hear that sound because, um, and for me, it's not even so much just like the flow. It's because the flow is very modern. If you, if you actually break it down syllable to syllable, it's it, it, it's a pretty modern flow. Yeah, um, you know, trap inspired. Like everything else, but his his uh, delivery and his voice is I was very say, New York, dude. His and, charisma on the on yeah, the mic is dude, just it's super so New York, and it's the East thing Coast. that makes that New Yorkers different. It's the thing yeah. that makes. New, I think it's the same thing that Young M.A. has too. It's like it's something that makes them different, like right. Fab. Like it makes them different than every other rapper out, and that's what. And I think that that thing that actually goes to goes with like um west coast rappers too to me like the way that a lot of people from the bay sound versus people from the from um la sound and like but that that new york sound and how i don't know i guess i'm just going in my head right now that's thinking about like how davies has that charisma and that swag and he he commands that attention when he's on that mic the same way that a fab does the same way that cameron does like cameron can be spitting like the most basic bars and it will you will feel that shit in your chest (laughs) you know what i'm saying and like the same thing with uh with um fab like fab will will he's the smoothest character out like i swear to god like he 
I, I want to say he's smoother than Jay. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he'll be on a beat and he'll just be like, you know what? This is my shit. I'm going to talk some shit about you and I'm going to laugh in your face and I'm going to go eat a sandwich. Like nigga, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Like this is my life. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. like he's so smooth and that's what like to me like epitomizes that whole like East Coast like flavor that 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 yeah. east coast um people bring to the game so like to me like that's the shit that i look for in my east coast rappers and i love that davies actually has that yeah and he's bringing that to the forefront yeah i mean you know he's he's signed by nas yep you know so you know, for a reason exactly nas nas saw something in him and you know i i grew up on nas man yeah shit, if i ruled the world man it was written Imagine that it was written was one of it, I had so growing up, so y'all can get a perspective of my hip hop, and I had all eyes on me, and I had it was written on my in my my bedside, uh, and I had my you know obviously I went to sleep with my CD player. Uh, yeah, you did. And my headphones right next to my Niggas bed. Don't even know what CD players exactly, are anymore. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I had my Sony my Sony portable CD player. Oh, that's cute. On this, it was the shock resistance, so you could like oh, shake yeah. it. Oh yeah. But yeah, so I had that. I had the Nas. It was written, and the Tupac allies on me. Uh, that was the history of me, and that's why I respect Nas to the fullest. Yeah, and I respect that album by Dave East. You know, I mean, like shout out to him, Kyrie Chanel. Go ahead and listen to that. Check if that. you weren't familiar with that Big Baby Drum, that's Big Baby Drum. That's the name of it. It's him and his dog on the cover. Uh, Kyrie Chanel is Dave East on the cover. Um, so. I know you didn't listen to this one, but I, I just got to speak on it. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't know uh, who Danny Brown is. I knew it was Danny Brown. You, you had yes. to. You had to. Um, He's on Danny Brown's nuts. Just kidding. But no, yeah. I I freaking love Danny Brown. And you know what? I The first time I heard about Danny Brown, it was from Triple uh, X, the, the album that he put out. Um, and I was like, what the? Because f- his voice was just so ridiculous. Um I actually think the no, the first time I heard Danny Brown was on the um the A train track from the A S yeah. Rocky. Really? That was the first time? I believe so. You didn't hear um what is that? Is it called Old? Where the I know in the video um he is No, I found that after. What? I was I was late on Danny Brown. That was my first Brown. time. I you know what? I was late on Danny Brown. Brown and then I went back cuz old was the record where it shows him as a kid. Right? Yeah, I think I, I don't even know I, what the name of that I'm or I I know old was the album that he put out before this one. Um, it is? Yes, but the video I think the video that you're referring to is one where he starts off as a little kid and it shows him like falling down and chipping yeah. his tooth and that's how he got his his, his teeth the way so. it is. No. That's um, not this one. It's the one before this one. Anyway, go ahead. I'm going to try and figure anyway, this out. I'm going to Google it. Triple X. Um, once I heard him on that, I was like, all right, I got to go back and listen to this guy, Danny Brown. So um, I checked out what he had available at the time, and it was the uh, Triple X. Uh, and that shit was weird. Uh, this dude picks some of the craziest beats. Danny Brown has a super crazy voice, um, but he was still talking about some real shit. Um, whether it. whether it was um about drug dealing, about struggling in Detroit, he's from Detroit, by the way, so it kind of mm-hmm. puts it in perspective for you. Um, whether he's talking about bitches, whether he's talking about doing drugs, um, he just had this really interesting and different topic matter, and the way he talked about it was different too. Um, I guess a lot of it was the drugs. Uh, he's not shy about. The amount of drugs that he does and the type of drugs that he does, um, but I think that I don't think he's shy in any way, shape, or form of the word. Yeah, I mean, no. I not don't to think throw so. your 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 thought process off, sorry, no. but I'm just saying, like, when I think of Danny Brown, I do not think of shy. Yeah, so uh, he's definitely not shy, and this new project definitely showed that he is not shy about the direction he's trying to take his music. Yeah, because um, this record completely different um the beats were things beats that you would probably not hear any other modern rapper rap on um subject matter you know talks about kind of what i laid out before um but then the way he flows over these beats that are sometimes not even 
fully beats or like mm-hmm. beats that are just like I don't know completely like like deconstructed songs and he makes it um really to me shows his lyrical abilities and uh and uh shows his uh his charisma mm-hmm. um and versatility too cuz you know he has the higher yeah. register lo- the mid register and the lower register and when he's ready to take you to that point he'll go up in his high crazy voice which a lot of people don't like i love that shit yeah, I love that, especially when he's talking about something that's that's a little crazy, some crazy night he had with some chicks and some too many drugs and shit. Like, I love hearing those stories. It's great. It's you great. You would, you man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I would. But no, like I, I I agree. Like he does have that versatility with his voice, where he does like go up and down, and 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 he has that ability to do that, and that and that um, it's like it's like a just a part of a part of his arsenal um of 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 ways to grab the attentions um the attention of the audience and it and it happens and it's very it's that charisma it's, it's like when Nicki Minaj started rapping first like she was doing all these like fucking antics and shit but it wasn't um to me I didn't think it was that authentic to her and you don't hear that shit a lot anymore right right so with him like this is authentic to him like he does those like he is that crazy guy that'll be up here and sometimes he'll be in the middle and then sometimes he'll be kind of low like stop this you're not this. you know what i'm saying like yeah. if he's you know what i'm saying like he the way his flow changes just goes with the way that his personality is and he and and he, it's he's human it'll be yeah. up down or mid you know what i'm saying like this i mean i i love that he's uh the i mean one of my favorite songs was really though I know yes. you heard that song. Yes, I uh, have heard that song. You know, I mean, yeah, I can talk about it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, I mean, and, and it, it it was one of the first songs that was released from the from the record, and yeah. I mean, um, it really shows it really shows his lyrical ability. I think because if you if you actually listen to what he says, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give y'all a lyrical breakdown. I, I, I need y'all to go and listen to this Danny Brown. And lyrical breakdown it yourself. Lyrical breakdown it yourself. <laughs> and then we'll we'll talk about it next time. Um but um what he's talking about and then how it kind of uh Ab Soul has a verse, Kendrick has a verse, and then uh uh Earl has a verse at the end. And it's 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 one of those tracks that just <sighs> This is why I love hip hop, man. <laughs> He's over here trying to cry right now. This is like this is like this is why we're here. Okay? Mm-hmm. This is this is this is exactly why we're here. When you when you have spitters that are in a room and they, they go back and forth and they, they try to outwrap each other. And I, I love that shit. Um especially over a different sounding beat, a different sounding song. Um so you can say a lot of things about Danny Brown. One thing you cannot say about Danny Brown is that he sounds like anybody other than Danny Brown. You can't say that he's not entertaining. I don't think you can say that. Okay. That's very entertaining. Um, so, yeah, check out that album. Um, let's go on and move on to another Detroit native. Do you know who I might be talking about? Um, I mean, it is campaign season, so. Campaign, campaign, campaign. So let's let's just talk about uh, Eminem's campaign speech in a, you know what? If we tried to do a lyrical breakdown on this song, we'd be here all fucking night. First of all, okay. So after hearing this campaign speech by Eminem, has anyone else heard this? It's it's not really a song. No, it's, it's not. It's like a spoken word over random eight sounds. Bi- eight bit sounds. Random clicks and hums. It's an and acapella. Hoos. It's not spoken word. It's like an. It's an acapella. Well, yeah, but it's 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 there are like some. It's like he's got skele- accent points, s- skeletal uh, pieces in there. It's not it, a song, song, but yeah, it's I not get a what song. You're saying. I guess what it reminded me of uh, was Nas's Book of Rhymes, in the way that he was. Uh, like what he was talking about and how he was talking about it. Hmm. Not because of any of the, because uh, Nas's book of rhymes had anything to do with this or it was any way related, but it was just how fucking random some of the shit was. Yeah. It was as if he was just going through, all right, I got this rhyme. Ah, oh, it's a good, a good, a good, a good. He's all right. I'm gonna spit that. Oh, it's terrible. 
dun dun. Then the next fucking he goes to the next page. Next All right, act. I'm gonna hit this. Um, which you know what? I love it. You know what it reminded me of? Love it. A less, a less. Um, what's the word I'm thinking of? It reminded me of a less um, conceptual exhibit C. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like, it's a story. And it was like, he was painting a picture for you. You know what I'm saying? When you're listening to it. Um, the only critique I have for this one, <laughs> since we all we have is a, crit- a critique for something, is that I'm tired of really hearing Eminem just fucking rap fast to me. And like, just, it's like he's throwing rap, raps at me in my face and I'm supposed to just take them. Yes. I know. And sometimes I get tired of that. Like I'm getting bullied by his raps. Getting off is the first order of business Uh, once I get in office. office. Yeah, like that (laughs) shit. Dude. Yeah. Well, even like the first line, I'm looking at it right now. Jumped out the second floor of a record store with a treacherous four cassette. (laughs) Like I can't even like say that whole thing. Like this motherfucker is fucking dope. Dude. But... I don't want you rapping at me like that because you kind of intimidate no, me when I'm no. listening to it. But rapper, the thing is, okay, songs like this. The second floor of a record store with a treacherous four cassette and a cassette record. Like so, songs Ecuador like this are are for mainly. I honestly believe like are for like a small group of people. Oh yeah, definitely. They're, they're for Eminem fans. They're for hip hop fans. Oh, you know what? The, yeah, go ahead. And they're for. Yeah, pretty much those two people. People yeah. who like raps, people who like Eminem. Like, if, if you're a true, like, fan of hip-hop, you'll understand what this is. I'm not a fan if, of Eminem. If, if you're a casual fan of hip-hop as just, like, a genre oh, this of is music, not for you. this is not for you. No. You can just walk away, and you won't get it, and you'll say, oh, this sucks. Third group of people this is for. Rappers. Yep. I was just about to say that. Go ahead. Th- this is for the rappers. Yep. All you motherfucking rappers out here who think you can rap, back the fuck off. Eminem don't even need a beat. Nope. He doesn't even need a consistent beat, and he can just murder Boom. you. Boom. Without even... And this motherfucker's almost 40 years old. It's crazy. So, so yes, this is for the Eminem fans, the hip-hop fans, and all you fucking rappers out there. It's like the textbook. It's like him saying, like, okay, you know what? This is my legacy. This is what I need to do in order to let y'all niggas know. And he, I think he knows that, like, people like Kendrick are, are listening. listening. You know what I'm saying? Listening, yep. And, he, and he's, like, saying, you know, this is Drake's. what you do. <laughs> and this is what you do. And, like, this is what you need to listen to. Like, if I jumped out the floor, the second floor of a record store, like, the, you hear the way that flows like i don't even have to know the way this song goes but i still have the cadence i jumped out the second floor like the fact that he put the second there you know what i'm saying like he's meticulous second floor record good store store. it's it's it's, treacherous four cassette and a cassette recorder in ecuador with edward nor ton witness the metaphor you know what i'm saying so there are like you know linguist and you know literature professors Sorry, and, and PhDs <laughs> who could like legit break down some of these lyrics um and not just the lyrics but the 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 flow of the syllables <sighs> and, and the rhymes and how it flows you know I've I've, I've seen a, a lot of this analysis done um for other people's lyrics like Kendrick Cole yep. um you know I've 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 seen people break them down even Tupac and uh Biggie and Jay-Z you know I've I've, I've seen people break it down and show the 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 patterns inside of patterns and i think last week when we spoke about about the um mick jenkins record yeah i think that's where he could see the biggest improvement is, oh is, yes is taking it to the next level where you know a detailed analysis of your rec- of your rhymes actually shows pattern not just in what you're saying but how you're saying it nerd alert and you know what i'm saying like actually yeah. bre- and m is so good at that yeah he's so good at at at, at understanding um like the rules and the um the the way he can play with words and rhyme and syllables and and all these different factors like all rolled in one i mean 
And he he showcases a lot of that, you know, charisma is showcased on here. Yeah. Um just just straight bars, like fast bars are on here. There's times where he's not rapping that fast. Right. But it, it's still and it, so listen to it if you're a fan of hip hop. We are um I listen to it like once a day. <laughs> it just keeps I think me if you're a rapper, right I think if you're a rapper, you need to listen to this once a day. It's like my multivitamin in the morning. I get exactly. Up. And I don't even like Eminem like that. I don't listen to his music ever. I, I bought his first LP, which was like, or his first album. And it was like the one of the best things I ever listened to. And then <laughs> I didn't like anything else from him ever. All right. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was that. Uh, take a listen to that and try and dissect that because there's a lot to dissect it within that, that fucking song or play or just masterpiece um what else do we have on the agenda today i um, mean i mean drake dropped like four songs fuck that nigga i'm just kidding <laughs> whoa <laughs> tell me how you really feel nah, i mean you gotta take shots at the top so drake dropped four songs i only know the names of three well yeah because he so so i i was kind of trying to keep up with this i do have a regular job so it's hard to like me too keep up with every little thing a very um, demanding re- regular job too but anyway go ahead but he 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 dropped four songs mm-hmm. um i instantly as soon as i heard that um i went to apple music yeah and there were only two songs available right i kept digging around kept digging around. i found lyrics for the one of the songs that was not uh on apple music which was mm-hmm. two birds one stone but i could not find the actual song it went up on youtube momentarily and then came down. So, you know, obviously, um, you guys know where to get music. You can just probably uh, yeah. download it from somewhere. You know, uh, I've got the songs now. But I, I try to find my things legitly because I do want to support the artist and not just the artist, but the recording engineers, the producers, uh, yeah, the all those thing. random people, the whole business in general. So, you know. When you're still in music, you're not just robbing the artist, you're robbing everybody else too. Anyway. So, right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, good spiel. Um, so yeah, there were three, uh, four songs that dropped. Um, we only know names of three. And there's only two that are available to listen on um, all of the streaming outlets there. Um, those three songs, um, those three out of four songs, excuse me, are Two Birds with One Stone. Two Birds, One Stone. Yes. That is the one that is not available. Um, and then the other two that are available are Fake Love and Sneakin'. So um, Sneakin', Fake Love is just a song just with Drake being in his feelings and talking about people that how they don't love you and how they like to front in front of you and blah, 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 fucking blah. He's singing and... Dude, Fake Love is going to be a hit. Like, and yeah, I'm, it is. I'm, I'm not necessarily, oh my God, a Drake stan, but... That's the song that people want from yeah. Drake. Fake love, people gonna love that shit. Especially all the shit that Drake has been in recently. Yep. Um, there's context to it. There's so. con- and the context is perfect right now. That song's gonna be big. It, it, it might not shoot to number one, but but it'll be big enough. Fake it, I love mean, it will might. Be big. Fuck fake it. love never, will be big. You fucking never know when it comes to Drake. Fake love. Um, will be big. he has another song called Sneaking with Twenty One Savage, and I just feel like that's a front and ass song, but um. I don't even think that he even knew or not. Nah, never mind. I'm, I think I'm hating right now. What, that, um, that he didn't know who 21 Bowser, Savage you was? you moving my mic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. The cat's trying to move shit. Um, no, like, I just, it was such a, I just feel like he hops on waves. He is. No, for sure. And, and that's, he's riding that wave. He's and riding like, the when, when I Savage feel that way, like, I can't like the song. Like, it just ruins the song for me. Did Jay-Z not ride with? Because Jay Z got older, did he not do songs with younger people? Like who? I'm I'm asking the question. I'm asking you. I ain't got the facts behind me at the moment, but I'm pretty sure he did songs with uh, younger people. Well, Jay Z wrote his lyrics, so that maybe that's what's. Whoa! Actually, he Giddy. didn't. He just uh, did them in his head. Excuse me. I was about to say, what the fuck are you about to drop on me? What type of bomb? Anyway, um, I don't want to hate on Drake. I really don't. But it's in my blood to do so. God damn you, Bowser. What are you doing? Um, But 
I don't know, like that just that whole Twenty One Savage feature just felt like kind of just like what? Like I was just confused by it. Is that yeah, bad? I mean, Am no, I like not? In no, the know? it's not bad because I'm I'm not a fan so much of Twenty One Savage. Um, like, am I missing something? Maybe I'm missing something. No, he's. I don't you know, mind missing something. No, Twenty One Savage is not. Person. He's like his own rapper. You know, if you're into that kind of thing, you'll be into him. If not, you probably won't be. Um, I don't on on, the, on this song. I don't necessarily mind Twenty One Savage that much. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the song. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, he's taking shots at Jay." It's not a shot at Jay. If anything, he's respectfully declining to take a shot at Jay. Because Jay took a shot at him. And he was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. I think this is a I'm sorry. Did you catch that line in there? Nope. He I listened said, to it once. I was like, I'm done. Okay, no, no. He, <laughs> it's not my kind of song. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. He, he, he has a line like where he's like, um, I don't have it verbatim, but... I'll look it up for you. I mean, I'm sorry. I just sound like I'm so, like, exhausted by it. But I need to, like, not be exhausted. I feel like I've I've fallen into that trap of being an exhausted Drake fan. Well, I mean, I'm I'm not a Drake fan, so... I don't know. That's the thing. Like, what constitutes as a fan nowadays? I, I'm, I'm... I don't know. Whatever. I'm questioning everything. Um, Sneaking. Featuring 21 Savage. No, because Drake says the line, uh, man, I'm only 29. No, I'm sorry. He goes, uh, you ain't own it right away. You had to wait on niggas. niggas. Man, man, I'm, I'm only 29. 29. Have some patience, patience with, with us. Ah. Um, and so that is clearly, it's not, in, and so it, it's not a jab at Jay-Z. If anything, it's him saying, yo, p- pulling up his skirt, being like, I'm not Pull taking shots, skirt. bro. I'm just. I just imagine Drake with a pussy. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so, so he's, so he's, he he's not saying, yo, you know, um, fuck you, Jay Z. He he's saying, give me some time, like, like or bro. like, give me some consideration, like, stop. He's like, bro, why are you taking shots at me? I yeah. was just saying, I want to be you. I'll be you one day. It's not yet, but. <laughs> I guess it's like I'm, I'm taking shots at you, but I'm so. But, but like, that's, let, let's, not let's, sh- that's not a shot. No, but let's let's be real. This is hip hop, right? Yeah. So if Drake's in the number one st- spot, which is like he is, it's not contested in any oh, way, yeah. shape, or oh, form. Oh yeah, he's the number one spot. As a number one contender, who do you go for? The previous one, con- number one contenders, right? You go for like if you are. Um, LeBron James, you're going after Kobe and you're going after Michael. No. No? Mm-mm. Why not? If if I was any of those people, I necessarily would not want to be compared to them. Cuz that will I'm always diminish compared, you. I'm not saying compared, but I'm I'm not I'm not saying compared like you're going after what like they they made these particular accolades. I want to go after those goals. I'm already up here at number in the number one spot. I see what you're saying. Okay. I so, want to achieve the other goals. Like, the, where else do you go when you're already at the top? You have so, to attack wherever else. You know what I'm saying? Like, as humans, we're never satisfied with where we are in life. Never. You can be the number one spot. Like, let's look at Jay Z. Like, he's never he's not satisfied because he, he keeps going and going and going. Everybody wants to do something and they have to keep going. We're never satisfied. So if you have made the number one spot in your generation, Drake is the number one in his generation. So he's going to go back and he's going to go try and attack the number one generation after after uh, that was before him and, and so on and so on. So I think you're right in that. Um, like, I, but I still I still don't think it's shots. I think if anything, it's paying homage. no. I, I mean, it's, it, it's not shots. Like I don't think if if it's anything towards Jay Z, it, it's I don't think it is shots. If it was shots, it it would have like a right. sting to it, right? And, and so I I feel like that little small little line, uh, let clarifies that he was not throwing shots at Jay Z. Um, if anything, he was paying homage, um, which is way different than throwing shots. Because when Drake wants to throw shots, he'll throw shots. Uh, he threw some shots actually. Um, a couple shots. Um, ironically, it's not ironic at all. Actually, I, 
I don't know why I said ironically. I was reading um, something. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I said he was throwing shots ironically. I'm like, oh, that wasn't ironic. Um, <laughs> no, no, he's he's throwing shots at um, both Pusha T and Kid Cudi in the song Two Birds, One Stone. Oh, yeah. Like, so, yeah, sneaking. So, we're over sneaking then. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you're listening. Sorry. My bad, bro. I was reading the the, the um, lyrics on sneaking. That's why I was, like, trying to see, like, where else I was going to talk about. But I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about. No, that's there. it. So, anyway. It's literally those two lines and everything else is just kind of. And so, like, everybody just blew up over those two lines. Yes. Um, Calm down. <laughs> that's all I have to say to them. Um, but, yeah. So, on two, bo- two, bur- two boards. Two boards, one stone. <laughs> two birds one stone two boards two birds one stone on two birds one stone um there were some shots fired there were some clear shots fired yes at both drake i'm sorry at both Pusha T and kid cuddy yes let's go over Pusha T first and then we'll go into kid cuddy the, and I, I think i i take the one thing i take um not offense but i i, I think drake should have took into consideration is trying to go after Pusha T's actual factual reputation when it comes to this drug dealing shit. Yeah, he he tried to go at his, at his credentials. And I think Drake, it, that's a no-no. Like, I understand that's how you possibly attack some of these other rappers that are like, that came up with you, but you don't do that to Pusha. I mean, I, unless you have some evidence, unless you have something. So but I'm I'm pretty sure Pusha T's manager is like in prison, prison. right now. And for, for real, can vouch for that because, for drug dealing, <laughs> like, right? Like big time drug dealing. Exactly. Like a lot of people in in Pusha's like camp, like have been indicted or something like that, right? And I think yeah. even Pharrell like is not part of that, but has affiliations yeah. there too. Yeah. So like for you to question like what's going on with his drug dealing past when that's what he's known as, he's a Coke dealer fucking rapper and his, his, his brother like had to turn to, to fucking God to get away from that shit. Like people don't do shit like that for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then the way that that pushes is has gone on for year after year after year, and, and knows how to flip a fucking word in regards to coke, and still sell songs and still you know what I'm saying like, you can't go after that motherfucker's character. I mean, so, it's just to me it's how so how I, because he's Drake and he feels like he can. It's the same reason why you go at a man who just put his whole. Like emotions on his sleeve, like it's, it's 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 the same thing. So, the same way you feel about like how dare you go at Pusha T on that? Like go at him on some bars. Go at him on how he's never you know gone platinum solo. Like, like yeah. Like go at him on his his success as a rapper. Yeah. But to go at his like I don't know masculinity or his whole like name to fame call to fame. In hip hop is, you know, he's the drug rapper. It's, I, I guess he's going at his credibility, but it's it's like, bruh, like you said, it's Pusha T. Like we we know what's, we at least we I guess we we believe we know. But Drake, where are you getting your information from? You're saying he w- actually wasn't selling drugs. Is that what you're saying? Because because people have said you actually haven't written your rhymes. So I mean, uh. And then to also go at Kid Cudi. Oh wait, hold on. When he, like, said he's he's going into treatment for depression, and then to to go after a man that came out and said he's going through depression, it just it's like Drake, seriously, bro. Okay, so I guess we might have to disagree on this one. Is rap? It's a contact sport. Oh. So you think it's okay? You think it's okay to go at go at Kid Cudi? You think? You don't I think, think that it was may a have been blow? a low blow, but I think that it's all holds bar if Kid Cudi is going at you and he's he's got. So so the reason why it's called a low blow is because it's it's against the rules. There's no rules in rap. So then it's not a low blow. So it's just a regular blow. It hurts. It hurts more than other all the other blows that he could have come up with. 
I just think that I think that rap is a contact sport and I think that people are really sensitive and I think that people are very sensitive to Drake and that Drake the sensitive rapper quote unquote is now saying some low boat low blow quote unquote stuff about a rapper that clearly came out and named him and said this motherfucker doesn't write his rhymes and and like called him out directly what do you expect somebody to do yeah, called him and Kanye out for exactly sure. you yeah. know what I'm saying like what do you expect me to do when I'm in pushed in the corner I can't believe I'm advocating for Drake right now but <laughs> but you know what I'm saying like what do you expect me to do when you're pushing me in the corner when you're you're affecting my brand you're coming after me like I'm on the top everybody's sh- shooting at me so i got a shot for you if i let you off then that means i gotta let all these other niggas off so drake didn't say shit when pusha dropped when pusha dropped hgtv this. no th- this is the response to hgtv he, he no, but he didn't say anything in regards to all the other shots that he's to the other shots he he, he decides to respond now when when he's at the highest point he's ever been well, I think okay. it has to. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's it's just it's just one of those things to me that speaks to Drake more than it speaks to either one of the two people he was dissing, is that, you know, Drake waits until he feels like he's he's gonna win, like he, where he, it's impossible Strategic. for him to lose, and then he's gonna make his move. It's like it's not about it's it's not about um, it it has it has nothing to do with principle about with, with Drake. It's not so you you cannot say that Drake is a principled rapper in that. What do you mean um, by that? What I mean is you can't say, oh, my God, someone is going to disrespecting me. So I have to go attack them because of because of the history of of what he's done. Pusha has been going at Drake for years and he's not responded once. OK, and now now after he <laughs> finally after Drake finally won a rat beef not saying i guess i shouldn't say finally but after he was exp- he was uh forced into a rat beef and he destroyed meek mill um now ever since then it's the appearance has been that he can't be beat he can't be touched and so he's been coming at every single person since then even though there were people taking shots before that well that's this is what my thing is is that i think that since that meek mill beef and since the um, the accusation, because the thing is that the accusations of his pen haven't been brought up in, until that Meek, Meek Mill thing. So now he has to make sure he brings his pen. So anything that comes after that Meek Mill brief, he has to address. Especially because he used to say that if you diss me, don't expect me to address you. But then he addressed Meek. So now he has to address everyone else. And so he's, so yeah, Pusha addressed him before that. But now that apparently Drake's out the bag, he can't let Pusha, especially somebody like Pusha, come at him. But guess what? He might lose because I think that Pusha could back that motherfucker to a corner. Well, yeah. But anyway, and a lot better than Joe Button did. But um, but like that's the thing I think that he's doing right now. Like he he has to say something. It doesn't matter if it's Kid Cudi. It doesn't matter if it's Pusha T. It doesn't matter if it's fucking Joe Blow. Like, he has to say something now because he put himself out there in that light. I mean... I mean, let's be real. He's throwing shots at Diddy. He's throwing shots at everybody now after that whole, my pen, question my pen. And, and it has to do... Like, that. I think that that's my whole, that's my whole thing is that it has to do with the fact that his pen, pen was questioned. Is, and so now he's going off. So did... did did Kid Cudi ever make a comment about his pen, or was it just about him being a dick? I think it had to do with his pen. I can let me go ahead and fact check that, but right. I'm pretty sure it had to do with like he said in the people that aren't writing things or something like that, and he said that goes for Drake. Oh Kanye. yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It questions um, his pen. That's, that's a common a, denominator, dude. Yeah, but so when we make fun of, uh, so I guess not when we make, but when when it's like when. When Donald Trump looks the dumbest is when he's super defensive. Mm-hmm. My hands aren't small. I got a big dick. Right. I get where it, you're going. It's, it's, it's like, what are you actually saying? Why are you so fucking defensive? I get where you're going. Why are you so? Why must you prove yourself, bro? Mm-hmm. Why must you build this building in the middle of downtown Chicago and then put your name on the side of it? <coughs> you know how many other buildings there are that downtown chicago 
right. that don't have a person's name on them and, and we still them. know who they are. Yeah, I get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you're insecure. Mm-hmm. Drake has an insecure pen because it's not his. If he was secure in his pen, he wouldn't. Who gives a fuck what you say? I'm selling millions of records. Numbers, numbers, uh, talk. Numbers don't lie. Yeah. But I also think it has to do with the insecurity in hip hop in general and the sensitivity in hip hop in general. Everyone's super sensitive. You say one thing about one person and it it can end up being something ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I think just, I just think everyone's super sensitive and I think that's why we have rap beefs. And I think that's why we have like just battles in general, because let's, let's, let's be honest. The only reason why we go at each other like this is because this is the only genre where we write, where we are brought up on writing our own shit. This is the only genre where we are brought up on authenticity. And if you attack my authenticity, then that means I'm going to get sensitive as shit about that. Like I'm going to, I'm going to attack you in regards to that because that's what this whole genre is built on authenticity so look bro i'm i guess it's it's easier to say this from the outside but if i fucking went at meek mill and murdered him the way i did um if anyone else questioned my pen i would have like maybe one or two lines for them um you wouldn't have full songs i mean and i would i would like maybe have one or two lines for like every hater and that was it like clump them all in one and, and let that be that um Jay Z did that shit extremely well. Do you remember when, uh, back in the day, there was a Jay Z? There was a whole fiasco about Jay Z not writing his own rhymes. I'm a biter, not a writer. I'm a biter, not a writer. Hmm. This was a song that came out back in the day. Um, it was done by a DJ. Excuse me, I don't fucking have the exact name at the moment. We'll have that down in the link in the description. However, Jay Z, uh. It, Cameron. In this song, in this song, um, they synced up the Jay Z line and the Biggie line. And it went back and forth. And there were like a whole bunch of fucking lines where you're like, oh shit, that was a Biggie line. And Jay Z will just throw these fucking Biggie lines in the random ass songs. Um, you know, and Jay Z came back later and was like, you know, that's just me paying homage. That was my big bro. Like, yeah, yeah, you like- know, I'm, I'm just paying homage and making sure he lives on forever. Other people thought that was biting. Now I I feel like what 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 Drake is doing is a little bit different than what Jay Z was doing, where where Jay Z could at least play it off and say you know I'm paying homage. Um, Drake is is like having other people write his words and saying that they're his. Like there was no acknowledgement that oh no these are someone else's words these are someone else's thoughts, and that's why I think um, what what Pusha T said was so was so hurtful because he said you know um, what do you say it if if the feeling ain't real if the pins like if the pins not real then you. the feeling's not real like so your whole thing is based on you being an emotional rapper. But if those emotions come from someone else, then you have no ground to stand on. Mm-hmm. He You're, said, uh, these niggas call, a du- call of duty because their killings ain't real with a questionable pen, so the feeling ain't real. Right, the, the feeling's not real. You're supposed to be an emotional rapper. So... Your fans love you because you're so, oh you're so introspective and in talking about how you feel about yourself and your life and your relationships. Mm-hmm. But if it's not really you, then there's no introspection at all. Right. It's just all bullshit, and you've been feeding us bullshit. So you know, I, I don't want to be the dead horse with the whole Drake ghostwriting thing, but I think you know, seeing his reaction, seeing the low blow, um, really, you know, builds a narrative and gives a clear uh, idea on the reality of the situation. And in all honesty, I feel like Drake is being defensive. I think he is being defensive too. And then like also like just to like the people that are thinking like, you know, 
oh, this is like why black people and mental health and all this other shit and everything. And I'm just like, you know what? Like, I get it. Like, I understand like the severity that has had that, that, you know, in our culture where we don't talk about mental health and all that stuff. I get it. But this is rap. Like, this is hip hop. You know, like I have to I have to keep it hip hop for this, you know. Um, and I'm going to I'm just going to read like one thing that like my friend um, Mass Potential shout out to Mass Poe. Uh, he said this on his Facebook and it, it really resonated for, with me. And he goes, one, I don't think that line was really all that bad. Two, I respect, respect black mental health and those folks like, like myself that deal with depression or an anxiety or whatever else. Number three, but if you throw shots, shots will be thrown back at you. So don't diss someone, check yourself into a mental hospital, then think you won't get a song called Crazy Bus thrown at you. I'm talking about straight Arthur Sample. Call your mama, then sample her voice. Cover the joint of a metal. <laughs> cover of the joint would be a medical arm bracelet. Like, come on! Like he's saying, like he's describing like the 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 diss song and like everything. Right, cover no, up no, for. no, I get it. And then he goes, number four, Tupac started a rap rap with words like "fuck your bitch" and the click you came, and he's like the Pulitzer prize poet like get the fuck out of here with that nonsense it's rap drake didn't diss a child at the park he dissed a rapper that dissed him first and he did he did it in a pretty watered down way honestly cuddy could get would get mastered massacred at a kod or smack battle like this is silliness and i think that he actually said it pretty well to me like this is rap like if you're keeping it hip-hop let's keep it hip-hop that's what happened like he's a grown-ass man and if you want to if you want to talk about mental health and all that other stuff, everyone in fucking hip hop has that. Let's talk about it. then if you're talking about that and you're talking about the whole fucking black society and that's a bigger picture. We're talking about hip hop. Let's just talk about the fun part <laughs> and not like the part that we all know is the underlying issue. Like we all know that there's something that needs to happen because that's like the whole bigger picture that to me that like that goes down like the let's go vote then let's go make sure that we're doing these things and like that's a whole nother area like. I want to talk about the actual fucking fact that this is hip hop and this is what we do. This is what we're built on. Okay. You're going to diss me. I'm going to diss you back. So, so Troy F capital Steez. Was that okay? No, it wasn't to me. Why? Why was that not okay? Somebody died. But okay. Yeah. So, so there are limits. Yeah. Limits exist. But it wasn't like. You, so like you know the Tro- at, Troy Ave thing, right? Of course, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did the video. How, how he harsh? Fi- he compared. filmed the video on the roof. Exactly. Let's 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 take a let's take a look at that, and let's take a look at what Drake did. It's not all that. It's it's pretty watered down. I think Troy Ave is better. What like do you mean as, better? Or like as a diss? As a diss? Like like as like like if his intention was to hurt someone's feelings. <laughs> So yeah. you know how like you don't talk about people that have died and you don't talk about people's kids? I think that that's like the underlying like unwritten rule. Like you don't talk about nobody's kids and you don't talk about like deaths. Like I can Like he so like Tupac said fuck you bitch and the click you cl- claim those are still live well people. Yeah, I mean like to me I feel like that's what where the lines are like the unwritten rule. I guess no, but I guess if if I guess I but, guess Devil's advocate to myself in the same Pac record he did talk about uh he's like, Hey you got sickle cell anemia or some shit? Could have seized you on stage. Uh mm-hmm. who was he talking about? I don't remember. Uh, I mean maybe that was too far. I guess in my head <laughs> <laughs> So okay. So talking about someone's sickle cell anemia is too far. I said maybe, I don't know. But I mean but but, but maybe it's better than than nothing. So so I physical said, I, health is is a is a is maybe not okay, but mental health is definitely okay. No, that's that's what you're saying. What I'm saying is what I just said. Right. Is that if someone dies or you talk about someone's uh, someone's kids, then that's probably where you want to draw the line. And sickle cell anemia is maybe. You could talk about that. Okay. If you got cancer, bitch, I'm gonna talk about you having cancer. Anyway, I don't think. Back to my original thing, because you're not. You're, I'm not going to play this whole do si do with you. I'm I just think I, don't know what's, what's, I understand where yeah. you're trying to go, and I understand like you're you're trying to get a little more granular, and I don't want to go that granular. 
because I can't. I don't have all the fucking answers. I just think <laughs> you only got the answers. I don't have Slay. all. The, I don't have all the answers. All I think is that if you're gonna talk about somebody's a death in the family, of like you talk about somebody's death, mom, dead mom, or something like that. If my mom's a crackhead, she's alive and all that shit. Talk about my crackhead ass mom. But if you don't want to, if if my mom died and she died recently or something like that, don't do that shit. And if I have kids, you want to talk about my kids? Like that's that shit. Like the family thing. Like that shit. That that's. You're attacking everyone and not my character, especially in like in this specific situation. You're saying, hey, you're uh, I'm talking <laughs> you. You checked yourself into a fucking hospital after you dissed me. I don't know. I mean, I think in, in hip hop, it's it's in that hip hop sense. It's just a. Uh, it's just a thing. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just a hypocrite in this. I don't know. I mean, it's it also it's like, dude, this kid is sick. Who the fuck are who, you're the big who bad the fuck are you? You're man? the big fat big bad bully that's picking on the sick kid in the corner because he he because he he made fun of you or something. Like the dude is sick. You know, like, and, 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 and again, it is not like Kid Cudi didn't throw a little bit of shade at Drake. A little years bit? Years ago. Now he's bringing it up, you know, and, you know, Drake is going to have to play this in the game of public perception because, uh, in my opinion, it's just a bad look from a publicity standpoint to be dissing someone who just publicly checked themselves into a mental health institution whether it fits into the rules of hip hop or the rules of rap beef or whatever it may be it just it just it appears bad it looks bad it's like bad publicity but it's drake so he can do no wrong so it's probably okay he can do no wrong you're ridiculous now you make nah i'm not even nope 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 i'm just not a fan of it you know and uh I'm just tired of people being too fucking sensitive. It's it's but it's not like so people much. like people try to act like they don't know where the lines are drawn. But there's not clear lines drawn. It's war. People try right? to act like they don't know what common sense is. It's not common. Last time I checked. Man, it sucks. Maybe it's a rare commodity for us few people that know what the fuck is going on in the world. Anyway, I think we're going to l- end it there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm not trying to say I'm not an advocate for mental health issues. I'm just trying to say when it comes to hip hop, there's different rules and we can agree to disagree on that. Um, sure. Yeah. Let's go ahead and tell these motherfuckers where they can find us. Uh, Instagram Um, through the crate. Yes. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. Through the crate. You can find us online. Through the crate.com. You can find us on SoundCloud. Through the crate. You can find us on Stitcher, whatever, all these other fucking iTunes, everything. You can find us there. Um, We are most active on our Instagram. So follow us there and SoundCloud. Subscribe to us on iTunes. So those, I guess, are the three places that you, if you want to know more about us, we, of course, have the website that is a centralized hub for everything that we do. But if you want to see us on a day-to-day, you can also, you can just follow us on Instagram and follow us and um, subscribe to iTunes. Um, I don't have nothing else for y'all motherfuckers, so I am out, motherfucks. Deuces.